Hello, I'm Llewellyn King with MECFS Alert. A great deal of attention has been paid to the lack of funding for this disease, the terrible suffering, as there is no cure, really no therapy. Uh, but there are some very outstanding researchers, some physicians who tower above the rest of the field and are greatly admired, respected, as they struggle with inadequate funding and with the powerful indifference that the disease faces everywhere. One of those people, one of those giants in this industry, is Dr. Anthony Komarov, a professor at the Harvard Medical School. I'm very glad to be able to sit down with him and have a conversation about funding for biomedical research in general and MECFS in particular. Welcome to the broadcast, Thanks Professor. Thanks very much. It's very nice to have you. Is it a mess, our funding of biomedical research? There is a public view that the pharmaceutical industry does it all and miraculously solutions come down the pike. I think it is a mess. There is not a sustained, organized plan on the part of the government to increase research. What happens is it increases in fits and starts, and so often young people just get graduated from their training and enter a fallow period where there's really no support for them to, to do the things they were trained to do. That's one kind of mess. It needs to be better sustained over time. This is funding that comes through primarily the National Institutes of Health. And the National Science Foundation. Um, the, it is true that the pharmaceutical industry spends a lot of money, often very well spent, on improvements. But they're always basing what they do on the discoveries that were funded by the government. It's not very common for the fundamental breakthroughs that lead to drugs to have been made in the pharmaceutical company. Do the pharmaceutical companies have a predisposition to do drugs that they can sell, pills at the end of the line, rather than some other therapy? Sure, they do. That's their business, which is not to say that they're unwilling to invest in basic biology that might someday lead to a successful drug. They're, they're not entirely focused on, on drugs, but that is the business they're in. And they're looking around for the research breakthroughs that the government has funded to capitalize on. In my re reporting, I was quite surprised to find out that the pharmaceutical industry known as Big Pharma, because that's the name of their trade association, uh, claims that it spends $1.2 billion to develop a drug and yet, that may be on the conservative side. Recently, a drug for diabetes, uh, an inhalant, so that people wouldn't have to prick themselves to get their insulin, um, was withdrawn after $3 billion had been expended. That is an astounding amount of money for failure. It is, and it's not uncommon in the pharmaceutical industry. And they would say it's one of the reasons that when a new drug does come to market, it costs a lot. Well, this gets us to a subject that both you and I are interested in from different directions, and that is uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, also known as myalgic encephalomyelitis. We've discussed it on this program quite frequently in the past. This is a specialty of yours. You're one of the leaders, uh, one of the pioneers in treating this disease. What does it need from the government now? I think it needs, as many diseases do, more sustained research support. In the last five years in particular, there have been a number of really important uh, research reports that could have enormous potential for leading to a diagnostic test and to effective treatments but the ability of the government to f provide adequate funding has been limited because right now the National Institutes of Health budget for all research is just limping along with really not any increase at all in inflation-adjusted dollars. 
Why do we love some forms of science and shun others? Why, for example, are we madly in love with computers and telephony and biology is getting something of a back seat as, as other areas of science? Uh, isn't it in the national interest for us to evenly pursue all scientific discovery? No, I don't think so. I think the people who make those bets need to make a, an assessment of where the greatest potential lies and to prioritize the areas that do get research. If you have an illness like diabetes that involves, that affects tens of millions of people um, and leads to so much medical expense down the road, you just have to prioritize funding for a disease that's that common and that potentially serious relative to one like chronic fatigue syndrome that is not as prevalent uh, as, a, as that one. As a layman, there are two historic events that seem to me to sum up what happens when the government really gets serious about something. One was the uh, vaccines for polio, uh, which was a very frightening disease, and the other was AIDS. It took a while, but when the government and a lot of private support got behind AIDS, because people were dying at such a huge rate, uh, we, we got a result, you know, there is a cocktail now of drugs that help prolong the lives of people with AIDS. A uh, tremendous breakthrough, and of course polio has largely been pushed back into the shadows. Um, shouldn't we be doing that with more things? Well, uh, I'm a partisan. I believe that the, the advances in the biological sciences lead us to be able to achieve cures that were not even conceivable 20 years ago. So I agree with you. I think we should be spending more money on biomedical research. It is a tiny fraction of what our society spends on research of all types. Do you know what it is as a percentage of the federal budget? Oh, I'd be surprised if it was much more than 1%, maybe less. But isn't it something that we should be leading the world in? Isn't it part of the American ethos that we are the pioneers in science, that we bring forth good things for the earth? Well, we are the leaders. I think we probably collectively spend more money on biomedical research in the U.S. per capita than other developed nations, but it's still not enough. Not not enough relative to the potential that's there with recent scientific breakthroughs to really make advances on most of the major illnesses we affl that afflict us. This specialty, um, myalgic encephalomyelitis yeah. or chronic fatigue syndrome, the latter name is not much liked in the community because it tends to trivialize a very grave illness. I agree with that. Uh, what sort of money do you think we should be spending and where should it be spent? I mean, we have doctors who are looking at the, at, the, uh, at the stomach and those are looking at the brain. I believe you're looking at the brain. Um, how do we just prioritize within a disease where we look? I think you look at what previous scientific reports have revealed and what promise they, they have. To me, the areas that are of most importance to invest in are the brain because many, many research reports show that something is not right in the brain and more needs with to be done. With these patients. With these patients, that's one area. Another area is energy metabolism. There is now growing evidence that the reason the human being doesn't have enough energy is that their cells are not able to make normal amounts of the energy molecules. That's another big area. And the third big area is the immune system. There appears to be a state of chronic activation of the immune system in patients with chronic fatigue syndrome, myalgic encephalomyelitis. It's as if the immune system is fighting a war against something. And the $64,000 question is, what is that something or what are those somethings? How much money does the government spend on this? disease now? I'm not, I haven't looked at figures recently, but my guess is probably five to ten million dollars a year. 
compared to the three billion that a pharmaceutical company lost on a single drug. Right. So there's a great asymmetry there, isn't there? There is an asymmetry. And what about lobbying? How do how do diseases get heard in Washington? With AIDS, we did see people like Elizabeth Taylor take an interest and made us, and more power to her. Well, she's not, mm -hmm. no longer with us, but a fabulous contribution uh, that she made there. And we have uh, Jerry Lewis with his disease, with his telethons, etc. Are you lost if you don't have a celebrity out front? <laughs> You're not lost if you don't have a celebrity, but you are lost if you don't have an organized community of patients and related family members to talk to their elected representatives. That, that's what every illness that seeks more research funding uh, does. In short, illnesses need to lobby. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, Dr. Kamaroff. Great pleasure talking to you. Pleasure talking with you, Mr. King.